hello, 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 hello. Thank you. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Spend the day with me. It's a Saturday and we are going for a program and it's going to be fun. So don't go away. Stay till the end. There is a lot to learn with me, unlearn with me, relearn with me. It's inspirational and it's all fun. So don't go away. And the view. <laughs> oh, I stopped talking about the view because all the views I see are amazing. Oh, it's green now. And let's walk. Let's take a walk and see the city. We are a bit different. Uh, I'm Sandra, I'm from Domit. That's the Documentation Center and Museum of Migration in Germany. Um, and we are a bottom-up initiative. So we've been founded by migrants in 1990 um, because they realized no one really is taking care of collecting migration. So museums were not really aware of the topic, archives neither, um, school books were not representative at all. Um, so basically they started doing it for themselves. Um, I have um, so during apartheid, um, the government racially classified people and according to the racial groups, people were forced to live in particular neighborhoods and areas. Um, and District 6 was a multicultural sort of spot in Cape Town neighborhood. Um, and between 1960s and the 1980s, this neighborhood was completely demolished. Um, people moved away from it. Um, and it's a real scar in the heart of Cape Town. Um, and so the museum really started out of people, community members, who wanted to keep the spirit of District 6 alive. Um, if you can imagine, it's a community that, um, when we talk about the demolition of the neighborhood, it is of a 20 year period. When you're looking at images from the 80s and the 70s, people are living in a war zone, um, and they are just trying to sort of figure out where the government is going to literally just throw them, essentially. And so there's a lot of trauma associated with this community. There was a lot of lost networks, communities, churches, schools, um, sporting clubs, everything. It was just, it felt like it was taken away from them, and it was. And, but it was a very sort of um, activist community around it. It was an important suburb in Cape Town historically, not just in terms of the community itself. Um, and in the 80s, a lot of them decided that, you know, we need to keep the memory of District 6 alive. And I always joke about this. They decided to organize a conference, although I don't know how, how conferences are going to change the world sometimes, but they decided to conference was it. Um, but, but the idea was basically that, um, the neighborhood is no longer there. It's this empty scar in the middle of Cape Town. But we're going to hold exhibitions. We're going to speak to, to we're going to collect stories. Um, we're going to have film screenings. And we're not just going to do it in District 6. We'll do it throughout Cape Town. Um, and eventually, just on the journey of sort of keeping this memory alive, we found a physical building and we found a home, which was an old Methodist church that used to service the District 6 community. Um, and the first exhibitions were there was no intention to be um, historians, there were no intentions to be archivists, there were no intentions to be education managers, education officers. It was literally a community deciding we will use the skills that we have and the knowledge that we have to ensure that this, this trust is, is not forgotten. And so they put, they moved into the building, they put posters on the wall. It's, you know, um, in South Africa it's plastic, but blue tack I think is, is sort of the, the equivalent. Um, they would bring in objects from their homes, it was family images, they would bring in street signs, they would bring in anything that was sort of the tangible memory of living in District 6. But importantly it was a community space so they spoke to each other. Um, and the museum really opened in 1994 which was the year of our first democratic election so it was an important year for um, the country, it was a time when people were feeling a lot of hope around the promise of South Africa, the promise of the future, and what it could mean to come back to District 6. Um, and so there was a lot of activism that was grounded in the museum's DNA, that this idea of participation, nothing about us without us. Um, and so they 
decided though to create a museum. And it's one of the things that we be very juicy <laughs> there is silence so sometimes speaking in other languages we need time that silence to digest and uh, slow down as well sometimes you have to slow down to see better and sometimes you have to slow down to think differently okay so these are just some promises for what will happen and also what will not happen to take the paper off the clipper mm -hmm. and to put it either up here or here. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> oh, it's oh, okay. Mm. So this workshop was actually based on the book City Shadows Psychological Interventions in Psychiatry but also from the workshop is that living in cities especially if you live in a city 
can actually come with a lot of hidden stresses think about it what what comes to mind noise crowding and sometimes there are so many people but you don't feel like you belong and these are the things that um, the book calls city shadows and they can contribute to anxiety depression and burnout our mental health is actually influenced by the environment in which we find ourselves so um in many cities sometimes there are poor housing there are not green spaces you know me i like the view so the view has the view and when the view is viewing there has to be plant in it if the view and when the view is viewing there has to be plant in it if you don't watch my short spells this is the time that you can watch some i always love to see nature <laughs> this is the <laughs> <laughs> this is the one I drew. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> our environment has a profound impact on our well being. So, calm, supportive environments help us to really relax, right? You don't have to be a mental health professional to offer support to someone. We need to deeply listen. Deep listening paying full empathetic attention to others so for us the assignment was that you look at the person in front of you look directly at the person and draw the person without looking on the paper or on the pen some of the results were amazing and fun <laughs> But then basically what I want to share with you is that painful, empathetic attention to others can help people open up. Messiah, right? 
lost, I still fail to express Father, your love never ceases Even in the midst of my darkest day Now it flows like a river Thank you so much for watching up to this point. Did you have some fun? Did you learn something from it? Now, please, have you subscribed? If you haven't, please do subscribe. Have you liked? If you haven't, like it. And see you in the next video. Until then, keep being awesome, bold, confident, and keep learning, keep going. And it's bye.